Okay, guys, it seems like we have a new video from Mad Season Show. GD GDKP BTFO. He hasn't uh, been making so many videos lately, but maybe now he's back. Let's see what he has to share with us. Ah, yes. This old intro, mate. Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. And today we are going to discuss GDKPs. In Season of Discovery, Blizzard recently announced that they were cracking down on this form of raiding, and so far they've been pretty consistent with that. It's caused a bit of controversy, a bit of a stir, if you will. The MMORPG player kind of has a history for their ornery nature. We don't like our Vigias messed with, so I just thought that I would explain the situation for those of you who are lucky enough to not care about any of this. So, GDKP runs, short for Gold Dragon Killing Points. DKP is a player-managed reward system for raiding, developed as far back as EverQuest in 1999, oh my God. and is pretty self-explanatory. This is the beginning of gaming, guys. Look how it looked. Back as Ever this is how it looked. And people were having so much fun. Two pixels, an invisible dragon. It was so much fun. <laughs> Quest in 1999, and it's pretty self explanatory. Then we For move killing to this. dragons, raiders get points, and they then spend these points on items. Nice loot. So let's say that little Timmy has 100 DKPs, and Todd has 400, and the Sword of a Thousand Truth drops which costs 200 and both Timmy and Todd bid and Todd wins because he has more 200 is deducted from his total bringing him down to 200 and Timmy rage quits because he's bad and now instead swipes his mom's credit card to buy gold which he will then use in a GDKP run to get everything he wants the rules of the run vary between later but generally they work like this a raid is run between carries and whales. The carries clear the bosses, and the whales enter a bidding war on the loot that drops. And at the end of the run, the pot is... During Nextramas, this got so bad. I think um, the first Nextramas in Classic, the first Gressel that, that, that dropped was sold for 198,000 gold. That was uh, close to a gold cap. In Classic WoW, you can only carry 214,000 gold. And the first Gressil that ever dropped, which is the best sword, basically one hand for rogues and warriors, so sold for 198,000 gold. Now, I would imagine that the guy who bought it, Gressil dropped from the last boss, but before he got to Keltuzad, he probably bought other items and he bid way more than that. So how did he carry so much gold with him? I think he was able to, to trade between... Uh, other characters or I think that at that point they did a math and that guy spent thousands and thousands of dollars for gold he got banned eventually well I guess for nothing look at those beautiful little whales that's a little whale that's a bigger whale and this guy this guy spent thousands of dollars you can't you can't you was in that item he bought like six items you were in that run Oh, how much did he pay for them on average, if you remember? Crazy, right? Wow. He had a big cut. That's for sure. That drops, and at the end of the run, the pot is split between all members of the raid, with a leader usually taking a larger cut for organizing it. So, you may be asking yourself, what does any of this have to do with dragon killing points? Well, the answer to that, my dear viewer, is absolutely fucking lootly nothing. <laughs> so right off the bat here, we're off to a great start. Even the name is stupid. Yeah, it should be gold bid. Gold auction items. Rather than gold DKP. I don't know who came with the... Well, the reason why they called it gold DKP, I think, is because there was a system with dragon kill points where you would be outbid each other. So it's the same, but now you do it with gold speak for everyone, but from my personal experience, Wrath of the Lich King was the first expansion that I remember seeing them.
Hey Godzilla. Hey, you. You're finally awake. At least on my servers, so we're talking around the 2008 days, and they're pretty sparse mainly because the average skill ceiling of the player base was, of course, far lower. Especially talking vanilla here, there wasn't really enough room for dead weight because 50% of your raid was already dead weight. What the fucking 50 DKP minus? What the fuck was that shit? Guilds sort of struggled clearing the content with their best players, so carrying somebody who has more credit card transactions than hours played wasn't as feasible as it is today, and they've been a nagging issue within the realm of classic because of that. Man, what? <laughs> 25 minutes Molten Core run. I'm not joking. During vanilla, me and my guild would start at 6 p.m. my time during Europe time. And we would finish at close to midnight and people would have to go sleeping. Like six hours we used to spend there. I think it was when we the guild was fresh. Everyone was like fresh 60. We would progress on some bosses. We would laugh. We would have fun. But we would start at 6 p.m. And it was midnight. So six hours later, we were still in Molten Core. And the guild leaders and the raid leaders were begging other people that would have to go to the job tomorrow to stay for more so we can finish one more boss or something. Now look at this. 25 minutes and 34 seconds Molten Core. Ah. But look at, look at the warriors in the raid, in the rogues. So more than half of the raid, it's warrior and rogues. There's a hunter there because uh, they need true shot aura probably. And uh, what else? That's it. <laughs> it just doesn't feel like vanilla. Vanilla. Yeah. There's reason number one why they're generally seen in a negative light by the community these days. Aside from that, reason number two is that Hunter their is the negative pull effect hey, good point. is yeah, amplified running. by another one of classic struggles, and that's, that's good point. cheating. You need a good RNT hunter. Or real money transactions. Since today Blizzard is no longer interested in hiring actual humans, cheating has become a major issue within Classic. In fact, just recently they fired like an insane amount of employees, yeah. a lot of them being GMs. Not that that itself is really that <laughs> crippling to the game because ever since 2008 with the Activision merger, they started recruiting from Baron's chat as evidenced by every GM just telling the players to look that shit up on Wallhead. <laughs> just amazing that's like if you have a problem with your phone and the representative just tells you to google it it's just impeccable but i digress anyways swiping rnt whatever you want to call it has been a major issue with classic since the re-release in 2019 so the existence of gdkps creates this awkward dynamic of pay to win you buy gold yo listen look at that Sacrificial gauntlets for 20G. Uh, so many items for 20G here. Zanzil seal and Zanzil band. Look at that. You got the, the, the set for about 200 gold. It's not that bad. <laughs> With less than 1,000 gold, you get up like... 20G is the lowest bid. <laughs> you did so many ZG gold DKPs. Listen, guys. Honestly, in all... Things I don't think gold AKP is a bad system. It's actually a quite great system because it allows you to find a way to obtain items outside of raids. I mean, to make some sort of progression. The only problem is the gold buying. So if there would, wouldn't be any gold buying, gold would have more value. And uh, it would still reward the one who puts the more time in. Because you would spend a lot of time to farm that gold. And you will... Um, you will just be, like, rewarded for your time in the game. The only problem with the system, it's literally gold buying. That's all. Because if there would, be, there would be zero gold buying in, in World of Warcraft, and there would be gold DKP, you think noobs would have items or money to join a gold DKP? No. They wouldn't have. This is, they found a way to bypass the system, join as a noob with a thousand dollars into a raid and then get more gear than someone who puts a lot of time and effort. Pay to win. You buy gold and you use that gold to get the best items in the game. Yeah, yeah. That's it. During Keep the, the grind. initial run of 
classic. <laughs> we talked about this. Um, this sword infamously sold for gold cap. From gold that was all completely farmed, by the way. This guy's just in Tyr's hand a lot. No, no, he didn't say Tyr's hand. I think he said, uh, whenever he was asked how he got the gold, he said DM East jump runs. I think he said DM East jump runs. <laughs> Dude, I've been doing probably more jump runs than everyone. Like, I made 10 videos about jump runs. About boss skills, about all DM, I farm like DM, I haven't made a gold cap. I think the most I had was like 40,000 gold, and I grinded like a madman. All my gold was grinded in vanilla. And I think I reached like 40,000 at one point, or maybe 50,000. That was my max from grinding. <laughs> but anyways, between that, the level boost, the wild token, this paying for all forms of character progression is one of the reasons why many have strayed away from retail. And now Classic Wrath told you so, by the way. So seeing this in Season of Discovery leaves a pretty poor taste in people's mouths. And it's a constant reminder that by choosing to just play the game and paying the $15 a month, they are disadvantaged due to the existence of GDKP and Blizzard's poor performance in upholding their own TOS. It makes it such that the most powerful item in the game is your credit card. <laughs> That's a really nice one. This is a really good one. Mastercard, bind on pickup, main hand. 69 with 420 damage. Dagger, 2.4 speed dagger. Look at that. You can't see it. Because the best way to play an MMO is to do everything possible not to play it. Wow, this is so genius, man. I was always saying this whenever people were buying gold. You're paying money not to play the game. You cannot play it for free. Think about it. This is genius, whoever made this one. This should be like the thumbnail of this video. This MasterCard put on the thumbnail. It's perfect, man. Where did, we, where did he find this one? It's like whoever made this is a genius. And the most efficient way of playing is through money investment as opposed to time investment. And it ruins the competitive atmosphere of the game. That's critical to all multiplayer games, in fact, so. It exists in pretty much every version of the game, um, even in hardcore, which is about as bad of an idea as it is hilarious. I don't think it's that popular in hardcore, is it? I think in hardcore it's more likely to have a guild, a tight guild with community, like Mortals was, like Hardcore Elite was, like... Uh... There's another guild rating, I think, I don't remember the name. All the KPs in hardcore, it's like... The, the problem with hardcore is that in order to succeed and clear all the content, you have to have a tight community. Like the guilds in hardcore are much more likely to be team players rather than individuals. Whenever you have a gold DKP, everyone comes as an individual. I'm a performer, I get the cut, I do the damage. Because some gold DKPs reward you based on performance. I was doing some of those in Wrath of the Lich King. So I was doing more damage or I was doing more heal and I was getting a bigger cut. So uh, there are more individuals into... I don't think it's that popular in hardcore. Even hardcore itself is not that popular anymore, but hey, it's going to be another a new release in two days or something like that, a fresh solo cell phone server. But um, we'll see how that turns on. I haven't seen a lot of people making content about it. There's a GDKP for an AQ-20 raid, clicking, clicking, and clicking, the leader clicking, held clicking, all of the loot in his right. bags until the end, and then he died on a siren, so everybody got yeah, jack shit, which is pretty amazing, I must say. Was that me? Was that me in the background? An idea, as it is hilarious. There's a GDKP for an AQ-20 raid, clicking, clicking. and... The voice from the beginning, is that not me? The leader held all of the loot in his right. bags until the end. Probably and then not. he died on a siren, so everybody got yeah, jack shit, which is pretty amazing, I must say. And now, of course, with the WoW token in Wrath, told you so, by the way. And GDKP's reigning oh, sorry, supreme. Okay. Never mind. And somehow even more pay to win than retail, which is just even more amazing. So. Blizzard recently announced that for one of its That's game me. modes, what? the Season of Discovery, they are banning this controversial form of raiding. Their reason <laughs> specifically being that it doesn't match up with reason number one I listed. 
it's not representative of the culture of the community and rating scene as it was in the original in their eyes. If you're at all familiar with the channel, you probably know my opinion. I've been kind of, uh, outspoken, I guess you would say, against paid character progression in the past. I mean, I'm not totally against it. If a game is free to play, generally, I'm a little more lenient. I think it's kind of expected that there will be some level of paid progression in that model because, you know, that's the model they chose. But seeing as how Sod requires a sub fee to play, and the fact that Vanilla World of Warcraft at its core wasn't designed. The problem with microtransactions and free to play games, it's whenever you play a game like that, the game becomes a fucking shopping mall. <laughs> Go log into BDO, guys. You log into BDO, which is a great, great game. I played it from the beginning when it wasn't like uh, pay to win. And basically, whatever you click on the game, there's an option to do it with money. You buy pearls. You want to progress faster on uh, the promotion of that worker? Pay 50 pearls. You want to unlock more uh, slots into your bank? 50, 50 pearls. You want to expand your inventory? 50 pearls. You want to do that? Everything has an option to buy. And that's not all. There are hidden subscriptions. There's a value pack. There's a Kama Silver Blessing that gives you extra loot. There's a there, there, there's like 10 subscriptions that you can buy for $15 a month that you can put as permanent buffs, right? And then you have like, oh my God, that you, you're, you're walking into a shopping mall. How much am I going to spend today? So that's the problem with free-to-play games. And not only that, free-to-play games are more prone to bots. Because bots now have to don't pay a subscription. I'm not sure if you guys remember the Lost Ark launch. Lost Ark had more bots than players. Period. <laughs> like, yeah, like you have to be okay with microtransactions. I'm okay somehow with them because I did play a lot of BDO in Lost Ark. But um, listen, in Lost Ark, although you could buy like power from the from the website. People still bought it from golds from third party website because it was cheaper to buy gold and make progress like that. So think about that. Hey, look, who woke up? Yo, what? What you doing? I woke you up? Yeah, he doesn't feel like playing today. <sighs> Good morning, Mr. Slugsnail for paid progression in mind. It kind of breaks a lot of the core principles of the game. Um, the main one being what Blizzard stated, and that's the, the culture of the community. When you wanted to raid in Vanilla World of Warcraft, you found a raiding guild. Nothing was really puggable. These GDKPs didn't really run. So because of this, this raiding system is sort of an affront on the culture of the community and the rating scene as it was in 04 to 07. As someone who played it back then, I can say that this stuff just, it didn't exist on such an intense level during vanilla, if at all. I didn't even know that gold DKPs exist until classic. And when, when I first heard about gold DKPs, I thought it was like a Chinese or Korean system. People thought, Frost, have you heard about the new gold DKP? I didn't know they would did it back in the past. So I only found out about gold DKPs at the launch of Classic, a bit into the Classic, and uh, I thought it was a new system, that it was never done before. And I played a lot of WoW, man. Yeah, what was my point here? Yeah, my point was that back in the day, if you really wanted to raid seriously, you would have to apply to a good guild, and those good guilds would take applications like time to decide, you would have to write like a short story. Like my resume, my resume when I would go to a job wouldn't be that good as my application to the guild. I joined during the Wrath of the Lich King, a guild called Used to Could. It was a top five Europe or something like that. And I played competitive for a while. We got like a Immortal and Naxxramas and stuff like that. And uh, it took me like two weeks to join. They were talking between each other. Okay, do we get this guy? Do we... <laughs> It was harder than getting a job, man. <laughs> you went into the first Gold DKP run, BFD, without knowing what it was. You learned that it was a Gold DKP run. Oh my god. So, it makes sense to me that that's the direction that they want to go in here. And beyond all of this, let's just bring up the elephant in the room. It's a major driving force of RMT. 
I think in a perfect world where it is, RNT yeah. isn't completely rampant, GDKPs by themselves aren't necessarily bad. Yeah, I feel like pretty I said, confident in saying that I think most people are okay with the fact that if you're really good at farming gold, to mm -hmm. be able to gear yourself up, maybe you farm a lot of ore, maybe you have this rare crafting recipe or even yep. flip stuff on the auction house. It's very legitimate and satisfying to make gold mm -hmm. and then buy like a Lionheart helmet or whatever. But Definitely. the simple fact of the matter is that, you know, it's not a perfect world. People do RMT and Blizzard just, they haven't been effective at enforcing their own rules. We just talked about this in my season. Guys, in a perfect world with educated people, with some sort of morals that wouldn't buy gold, we would have the best, MMOs would be the best games on the planet. Because that's why the value of an MMO drops, because people buy power. And by buying power, everyone gets into an equal field. And uh, you can no longer differentiate from who's the one with the power and who's the imposter. In a perfect world, there would be no gold buying and everything would be more fun in an MMO. Three to ten times more fun. Gold buying ruin ruins everything. In the discovery reveal. Another major issue. And, and you, you might say that I'm crazy, but there's so many like, just like in, in, in life, if you make a change somewhere, like the butterfly effect, you know? The butterfly effect says that um, if a butterfly shakes his wings in the other side of the world, it might cause a storm here, something like that. Because a small effect can have a, such a big ripple effect that would make like a huge change. And it's the same with the gold buying it with the bots. Um, a noob buys best in slot gear, suddenly you can't beat him anymore in world PvP. So it makes your experience like less good. Um, someone buys a lot of gold, no longer your equipment has a value. Because there are status rights in an MMO and bragging rights. During vanilla, if you are a hunter with full giant stalker set and you were seeking, see, sitting in Ironforge, people were looking like you. Look at this guy, man. I have green items fully and this guy is full epic. I haven't even found my first rare. And everything has a ripple effect. And there's so many other things like economy and... Gold selling and bots makes gold grinding less enjoyable as well. With the game is botting, but, you know, bots exist to farm gold because people buy gold. And people buy gold for many reasons, but one of the major ones are GDKP. So we'll see. But with this raiding mode being banned from Season of from Discovery, right? of Discovery it Gold could DVD. have the potential to mitigate what is right now a, a pretty big issue. And that combined with the fact that experimentation is sort of hey. the whole point of SOD, what I think that overall it's doing? a good call here by Blizzard. And, you know, besides, if you really like GDKP, you have a total of four other versions of the game with it. Dragonflight, Era, Hardcore, and Wrath, which is soon to be Cataclysm Yeah, I'm looking Classic, forward to Ashes of so Creation. I don't think that it's really that They have a zero gold to buying to tolerance. One so version of the game without it to see if you what get effect caught, it has months. in the version of the game where experimentation is sort of the entire point. But I don't know. That's just me. Let me know what you think. I actually want to see what you guys think about this. I know it's a pretty contentious subject. Just, you know, try not to threaten to murder each other's families over opinions over video games. But regardless of all of that, as always, remember that the most important thing is to like this video and to subscribe to my Patreon. Smash like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Subscribe to my Patreon? I don't have a Patreon, but uh, Mad Season has. Great video as usual from Mad Season. Farewell for, Farewell for now, mortals. For now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon you again soon so take his words of advice smash like subscribe and here is a video link for um for mad season very nice one oh we think pretty much the same when it comes to gold gps and the situation that we we have and i'm kind of happy that they removed it from um season of discovery it's a good test to see if uh, they're going to remove it from every version of the game La 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 la